Evening folks, back again. Another Irish whiskey review tasting. I was going to say whiskey tasting, but we're not going to just be tasting whiskey tonight because we have this. Now, someone had mentioned about doing a tasting of one of the Belfast Whiskey Week boxes. Now, I've tasted this on my own. Uh, I never got to watch the presentation. I was I was otherwise engaged. I can't remember whether I was working or not because I haven't worked really in about 18 months. Same as, same as a lot of people. Um, and then all of a sudden I've just got this absolute flurry of work. So yeah. Anyway, hope you're all well, by the way. Um, so this isn't a Irish whiskey review. It's a review of spirits from a distillery, some of which is whiskey, some of which is tis not. Um, Belfast Whiskey Week. So who have we got here today? We have the one and only Short Cross. Oh. Okay. See? Short Cross. Now, so we have the problem with these is they don't come with what they are. Um, but so if you miss or haven't seen the, the 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 episode to explain what's in the box, you're not really sure what it is you're going to be tasting. Um, well, you can have a guess, like, but it, it's not really the same. You kind of need to know what it is you're tasting um, to give you sort of barometer of where it is in the in the tasting chart. So first up, how I know this is I got in contact with. Uh, David down in Shortcross and he told me what was in the box. So we're going to run through the first few of these quite quickly. First up, this is a cask aged gin. Now I have no more details than that really. Um, my big drawback with gin is I don't like juniper berries if I'm honest. Uh, I don't find them all of that appealing. Uh, I, once, I once got a beautiful Beautiful venison steak. Oh, it was beautiful. And they put juniper sauce over the top of it. And I had to just ask them to take it back. Because I just couldn't eat it. Uh, and the meat was absolutely amazing. I just told them, I'd just take the junipers off my plate and bring it back to me. And they did. It was okay. Um, now, straight away, you're getting all the citrus peel, lemon peel. Kind of throat sweet. Sort of sugary lemon peel with a, a, a menthol, you know, the, the eucalyptus stuff. There's there's lots of sweeties, lots of um, the, uh, the resinous sort of pine notes. So you're getting all that, all of those sort of, almost feels medicinal, this. <coughs> Something called the back of my throat. So yeah, it, it, it's quite resinous, quite medicinal. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, again, <clears throat> it's just not my cup of tea. And, um, gin just doesn't really do it for me. Some, occasionally I can understand getting a and cocktail or something like that. Fair enough. I don't tend to do it an awful lot, but I understand why people do it. Quite fresh, <clears throat> quite refreshing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't have what cask it's aged in. I would hazard a guess it's probably a bourbon cask and it's not aged for all that long, so it's kind of... It's probably more getting some of the, the green notes out of the cask rather than anything else. So yeah, yeah. So that's cask eight ten. Bottle number one. Um, yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. I think that's bottle number two here. Bottle number two, clear. This is, I'm beginning to need glasses a bit more folks. I sort of jokingly said that I needed these a while back. Uh, but it's becoming more of a reality. 
got new glasses. Proper ones, baby case and all. I'm just getting old. Oh, just awful. So, yes. This is rum made to season barrels to finish the whiskey. So, this is interesting. What it was conveyed to me was that this rum isn't necessarily going to be going on sale. They're going to be using it to, to age casks or season casks to then age their, their whiskey. So, th th this is a sort of... It's, it's interesting that they have the confidence in what they're doing to, to make spirit just to use as a seasoning agent. Not to really... Um, not to, not to sell on for financial gain, but to think of a, a much bigger picture. So yeah, I mean, good on them. This is this is exciting stuff, you know. Very aromatic, very sweet. Again, I, I keep referring to this note that crops up. It's a, it's an umami note. A, 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 a savoury note and this has this has that savoury note it's got it's it's like a a, a, a gammon joint it's, you know that sort of sweet meaty note that comes through and this has this has lots of it yeah it smells like ozone there's almost a, there's almost a, a, a maritime smell to this and I really like the nose on this. If I'm honest, I, th I think the nose on that is quite exciting. I just, it does something for me. I'm going to say it's it's probably not a, a classical rum that um, lots of people would think, oh my God, that's that, that's a fabulous rum for rum aficionados because lots of them like quite sweet rums and stuff. This is, this is really nice. Really nice nose, just different. And uh, yeah, that, that sort of saline, meaty note that's on it really appeals to me. I really, really like it. Mm. That's got a really nice mouthfeel to it. Really nice oily. There's no real finish to it as such. Which is... In, in some ways, a little surprising. It doesn't. It doesn't finish usually. The finish is quite minty. It comes on, but that's that's really nice stuff. And yeah, um, I would buy that if I'm honest. Um, yeah, it's got lots of little, lots of little tick boxes that work for me. So yeah, I, don't be scared of bringing this out, David. I, I I'd be quite happy with that if I'm honest. Um, I I could enjoy that of an evening. Now, number three. Another clear liquid. This is Puchin. Which, I'm going to say it folks, sometime, Puchin's just going to go pew. Because it's starting from nowhere. Very little of it ever sold. It uh, can be a really high quality spirit that can have a little bit of age to it, not much, but a little bit. Uh, it can be very complex, really good quality. And let's, not, let's be honest, you don't have to age it, you don't have to age it at all, so you can get costs down where you can get so at some point some of the big guys which I know everybody's much maligned on the big guys, but whenever Diageo or, or, or Pernod Ricard decide to throw their weight behind something, lots of other people go on their pigtails or on their coattails, pigtail. It's very schoolyard whenever you're about nineteen eighties. Um you no, know, on their coattails people will come behind them. Now, this is made with malt, malted barley, unmalted wheat, and malted rye. It's really complex, really quite sweet, and it's not a, it's, there's not as much cereal to it as I would have would have thought. You'd have anticipated there would have been a lot of cereal and sort of cereal sugars, like glucose powder and that kind of thing coming through there, but it's not. It's actually very lifting. It's very, very light, like a, like a sugared pears. 
uh, the, the candied apples. It's really, it's really quite unusual. It's unusually sweet, but in a nice way. It's a natural sweetness. It's not that saccharine sugar. It's, it's got a nice fruit sweetness to it, like, like something that's sort of a natural, really sweet pear. Really, really does lift. If I'm honest, nose is better than the than the, than the taste. Um, it arrives really quick and finishes really quick. So what I mean by that is in the arrival, that sort of sugary sweetness, it comes on all the fruit punch. There's really sort of fruit to watermelon, uh, yellow melon, um, some peach. That's that kind of fruit. It's nearly like a fruit punch in some ways, which is really surprising because the cereal notes are using these different cereals. The, the fact that the rye is malted, somebody check there, the rye is malted, seems to have taken a little of the spice out of the rye. Um, yeah, it's, it, that's nice, but the nose on it's better than the, fin than the actual taste. I could smell that. For, I could smell that easy. That's, that's a really nice nose to it. You know, yeah. Very nice. Now we're getting on to the whiskies. Correct me if I'm wrong, number four. Now, a little bit of colouring to this. Now, when I say colour, I don't mean colouring. We've talked about colouring recently. What I mean is this is a bit of colour, so it's been aged. And this is a three and a half year old single malt. Finished in a Jack Daniels cask, I'm led to believe. This is my this was my first taste of short cross whiskey. Their own spirit, their own baby. It's been sitting for three and a half years, idling away, and all around it is toiling and working for the day when they can crack it open and say, come on you and me, come here. Come here you. Do we got a taste of you? Hmm. Barley sugar. Nice glucose. Lovely cereal notes. There's, there's almost a. A, 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 a cooking note to this and what I mean by that is when you're standing over a fr over a frying pan and there, there's that that where the where the carbohydrate caramelizes and you're getting those sugary notes coming up off of the what you're cooking it doesn't matter really what you're cooking there's that that sweetness that comes out of the food that's maybe being fried um yeah, lots, lots of sweetness, possibly on the nose, a little bit over, overbearing, a little bit of overbearing on the sweetness for me. That's funny, because it's three and a half years old. It's got a little bit of kick, but it's funny because when I say it's got that little bit of kick, it, it, it's balanced out quite well. And on the finish, it's going through some motions on the finish and finishing really well. There's lovely sort of chocolate mousse notes on it, a um, bit more sweetness, dark chocolates there. Uh, so it's finishing well. And you have to remember, this is very young whiskey, so it's not going to have lots of cask influence over a period of time to then give you your oily sweetness of and drawing the oils out of the cask. So you have to remember this. But it's balanced. That's what I would say. Um, in terms of body, it's got a nice, nice heavy oily um, 
my thing, which will take on a cask and bring those oils out and incorporate it. And it's, when something's viscous, it tends to have that bit more balance to it because it's not if it, if it's if the body on it's too light, you can get these things things seem to flag up a bit more. So whenever it's that double distilled oily texture to it, it tends to have a bit more balance. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. A little bit sweet for me, but it's nice. Now, I'm rattling through these really quickly, I know, because I don't want to keep everybody all night, you know. But uh, I'm only taking that with nips. So this is single malt, three and three quarters year old, aged in virgin oak. Okay. I'll just so this is virgin oak. Can open it here. Now it's taking on quite a lot of colour already, which would lead you to believe that they're using good fresh casks. I would imagine no one, no one did it fairly well. Um, they're not going to shy from paying decent top dollar for, for good casks um, when you're working with the likes Jack Daniels obviously they have lots and lots of casks but you're, you know what you're buying and there's a lot of re reasons why people buy Jack Daniels because it's not bad at all for what it is now virgin oak virgin oak because it's not been used with anything else you're going to get lots of those fresh green notes off it, um, you're, you're going to get a different kind of sweetness coming out. The, the vanilla will be totally different than you'll get from, from bourbon or, or, or Tennessee whiskey, not bourbon in this case. But you can, you can tell that the, the, the uh, that evergreen, those uh, fresh apple notes, those fresh fruit notes that you're getting are different. Again, there is lots of fruit here. Uh, so the likes of your figs, um, some raisin notes coming in. Again, barley sugar, uh, a touch, not as much as I sometimes get with, with your sort of virgin oak where you get that like fresh tobacco notes. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe if it was left out a little bit longer, you would maybe start to get those. There's some butter there. Again, barley sugar, some sweetness, nice body to it. Um, yeah, I like, I like, if I'm honest, I like that double distilled body where it's a little bit oilier. Again, finish isn't massive. Um, it's fin it finishes okay, but I mean, it's still a young whiskey. So I'll give it another, you know, as these age and go on, in years then you expect you expect the body to start getting um, even richer and the finish to be even longer now there's now that whenever the we're down here there's a slightly uh, burnt note uh, sort of charred wood toasted wood maybe a better angle so even some toasted bread notes coming through when you're down at this end yeah For less than four years old, it's, 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 it's punching well. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, very nice, very nice. Now, last but by no means least, and this is probably the one I am looking forward to, to the most. Number six, come in, your time is up. 
This is a three and a half year old painted single malt. I do like the fact there's more and more Irish whiskies are going back to having peat. Even if it's not huge amounts, even if it's just little bits, even if it's such, it, it can be, it just adds a little bit of more complexity, takes away a bit of the sweetness, depending on what way it's peated, uh, or what it's peated with, and just adds a different sort of layer, just a different dynamic to it. And that's the appeal of peat. When you get your Laphroaigs or, or your Ardbeg and it throwing peat at you, boom, boom. That's okay, that's that's what it's there to do. But when you're using it in a way that just adds that subtle layer of complexity on through, it just gives something different. It just pings it off the page. And this is quite heavily peated. Um, well, um, yeah, very saline, very Quite phenolic. Um, I'm going to say this is cut a little bit further in, in the run. Uh, I think it's cut a little bit further back into the, the tails than the others. And that's without tasting it because it has it has a touch more, it certainly feels as if it's got a touch more phen phenols in it. Tasty on the nose. I, my mouth is almost salivating in anticipation of this, which is a good sign. Mm. First thing again, 80-90% dark chocolate, straight away. The peat, the peat actually drops a little bit on, on the arrival because there's, this sounds, this sounds bizarre, but the, the peat on the nose was really quite dominant. When you, when you take a sip, the peat actually goes back, it re retracts in this rush of sort of dark espresso coffee, dark chocolate. It actually kind of feels like dark chocolate in your mouth at the start. It's just, boom, punches it, knocks the peat out of the way, and then the peat comes... It's just funny, it's almost as if the other flavours have pushed their way forward. We're here, we're here, and then the peat sort of takes over again on the finish. Which is really what it should do. Um, that's that's really impressive. Uh, I really like that. Uh, for an Irish whiskey to boldly stand up and say we are going to be peat, 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 and we ain't going to apologise for that. Yeah, I I want to say there's a, a, a tiny smoked fish note to that, it's, and it's that brininess that. That, that down by the sea again there's those there's those um, sweet meat notes coming through on the nose again this is, this is again this, this is like the sugared gammon you know you know where, where you would put cloves and, and sugar in the back of a gammon and then it smells, you get all those smells because all the, the juices run out and you get that lovely aroma. I don't particularly like all that on, on gammon or on meat, but you, it's the aroma is really quite pleasant. And this reminds me of that. Yeah. Um, on the nose, that's superb. On the mouth, it, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily balanced because it, it sort of punches its way about the place. But it's all the better for it. This isn't. This is not a refined whiskey. Um, this this is not a refined. Sit down, have a, a, a nice little. Thing. This this is a, this is peated quite heavily. Um, certainly punch, certainly punching. It's <laughs> letting so you know it's there. I would say it's punching above its weight, but it's quite heavily bodied. So. I don't know if there's a category above everywhere. Well, actually, I do. And I do know there's a ca no categories above everywhere. Now you're getting sort of chocolate nuts. Lots of 
nutty flavours. Um, yeah, chocolate, dark dark chocolate, coffee, nuts, toasted nuts, peat coming in, lots of flavour, bags of bags of bags of flavour there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what this is like in another couple of years, uh, if they decide to leave it for a while longer, because it uh, it might quieten down, might tame itself down, and balance itself up a, a, a bit more. But I rather hope it doesn't, if I'm honest, because, you know, we, we like this kind of thing. When when you've got sugary, oversweetened, sherried casks and lots of this, triple distilled, sherry casks, sweet, 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 it's nice to get this kind of thing, where it turns around and goes, mmm, hits you in the mouth. Keep up the good work. We're looking forward. Good things coming from short cost. There's Great stuff coming out here now. Um, and yeah, uh, number six, my favourite. Um, but don't be scared to bring out that rum, David. Uh, that that that's that could be a nice wee thing to have um, as a side line. It's really quite pleasant. So yes, hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, have a good time. If you can pick up pick up some good whiskies, sit down. Don't be scared to let me know in the comments. Watch me and Justin on a Saturday night. As we go live every Saturday night, um, I suppose there's no pubs open, so we might as well. Uh, well, the pubs are open, but it's not the same anymore. You have to sit there and walk over and table serve and all that's nonsense. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, join us Irish Whiskey Review Facebook Live, uh, YouTube, the our podcast, all of that stuff. I'll leave all that to Justin and he is on with it. So, listen, guys, take care of yourselves and uh. Hopefully see you soon. Take care.